Good afternoon. Um, thanks for sticking around. I'm, I'm pleased to be here. Um, I'm a research scientist and te technical director of the algae processing project on the Pickle Research Campus. Our initial focus was on producing biofuels, um, oil from algae, but it, um, we found that once you de-oil the algae, the leftover biomass makes a pretty nifty fertilizer. So we've begun branching out into the uh, fertilizer area. Get this right? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to begin by defining uh, sustainable agriculture and what that means and then talk a little bit about modern agriculture, what we're doing these days, and then um, what we're doing here at UT to transition to sustainable agriculture. And so sustainable agriculture um, means that uh, the yield must be similar or better than what you would achieve with a commercial fertilizer or um, uh, some other type of fertilizer. Um, it must not negatively impact the environment, which then can go on to negatively impact uh, human health. Um, and it, it, it ensures that the community is, um, it, as a whole, not negatively impact. Now, in, until about 70 years ago, um, when the um, commercial fertilizer industry was born, um, farming was, um, I'm sorry, this is, crop fields were, um, were dependent on the um, internal resources of the farm. So that means that uh, they would get their fertilizer products from uh, recycled food or manure from the farm. And they, they recycled their, their products. And um, crops were rotated uh, every year to maintain the soil structure. And the, the yields were modest, but they were, they, were, they were good. But over time, uh, with the advent of modern machinery to um, farm the, the croplands, uh, we see that we get a compaction of soil. And what that leads to is a uh, loss in microbial diversity and that in turn leads to a loss of organic material in the soil and then that diminishes yields. Crops are um, irrigated um, from reservoirs these days in modern agriculture, but overwatering can lead to uh, agricultural runoff and that runoff um, can lead to uh, eutrophication of waters and I'm sure you're all aware of the uh, so-called dead zone in the Gulf that's primarily due to uh, fertilizer runoff um, in, through, in, down the Mississippi through the heartland. Uh, chemical fertilizers do boost yields but They also can run off into the, the water system and, and negatively impact our water supply, which then goes on to negatively impact our human health. Um, same thing with the pesticides, and this map shows uh, all the areas, um, the, the darker brown, the um, more impact of the pesticide use is in our water tables, and then that goes on to um, impact our human health. Um, Monoculture farming is great because uh, you can produce large harvests with minimum labor, but that's the pesticide. But the monoculture farming discourages the microbial diversity on the farm, and that in turn negatively impacts the soil structure, the soil nutrient content. And so um, I think it was David that um, alluded to his, um, this sort of short-term gain with this, with this coral example. You get a short-term gain with um, commercial fertilizers, but over time it's negatively impacting the soil. It's reducing the nutrient content of the soil. It's increasing runoff um, and we're heading essentially into a crisis situation here. Uh, this just shows that um, 
uh, a study showed that um, commercial fertilizers um, will, um, or compost fertilizers will perform just as well as commercial fertilizers um, if applied um, on the farm. Uh, this is a global map showing soil degradation due to aggressive agricultural pra practices. So um, we're interested in transitioning to a sustainable system where we can um, apply organic nutrients will, that will encourage microbial community diversity, that will um, reinforce soil nutrients and soil properties and um, boost yields over time. And to do this, uh, we're using the algae um, biomass that we produced. And essentially, algae are little plants. So they will take up CO2 uh, and sunlight and convert it to oxygen and, um, and oil and sugar. What we can do to close this loop is harvest algae from a uh, nutrient-rich source like a um, um, recycling plant or a, um, uh, from a waste stream. And the algae will take up the nutrients that are necessary for agricultural farming. And we can use the algae to um, apply as a biofertilizer. And this is what the dried algae looks like. Um, we performed a um, pilot study here at UT using uh, undergraduate students, and uh, we found that the um, algae that we harvested outperformed the commercial fertilizer that we used, and that prompted us to uh, propose a larger UT study, which has been funded. Um, we have already um, harvested algae from uh, a waste treatment plant here in Austin, dried it, and we are about to apply it to, uh, this is our harvesting uh, unit. Yeah. And we are about to apply it to a um, designated plot on the Pickle Research Campus. So we're very excited about this project moving forward. Um, we're hoping that uh, our data will uh, cause the rest of the wider community to adopt this sustainable biofertilizer approach. That's the study. Uh, these are the folks that are involved in the project, and thank you.